Hi, I'm Jill from Homeschool for Real Life, and I want to share with you today a fun holiday card game that you can also turn into a math game because everything is more fun when you include math. Llama Drama Holiday Edition is a really cute Christmas card game. They say age is seven plus, and I think that's because you have to keep track of a different rule for each of the special llamas in the game, so that might get a little hard for young ones. But you could always play together, play as a team or something like that, and I think they would catch on. They also have to be able to compare numbers, which is one of the things we're going to talk about when we discuss how this could be a math game. One fun thing about this game is it says, there, it says it's for two to four players, but you can combine decks. If you have more than one deck, you can combine them, and then five to eight players can enjoy playing together. So... I'll show you a little bit about how we play and how we can incorporate some math. So let's talk about basic gameplay first, and then I'll show you how to turn this into a math game. So as you can see, they put a lot of effort into making these cards really cute, and each um, separate type of card has a different unique picture that goes with it. So it's really fun just to look at the pictures, and my kids enjoy this as a holiday game. Original setup, each player in front of them has a hand of five cards, three cards face down, and three cards face up. And these are going to stay in place until the end of the game. So each, each player has this. Then there is the draw pile and the discard pile. So this, this pile wouldn't even be there at the beginning of the game, but we'll assume that we have played some, and so we have a discard pile going on. So here's my hand of five cards, and basically on my turn, I just want to lay one of my cards on the discard pile. The rule is that I can only play a card with a number that is equal to or higher than what's there. So out of my hand, I could only play the six. I could not play any of these numbers, they're too low. But I could also play the Electric Llama. The Electric Llama says play on any card. So I could lay that there, no problem. It reverses the direction of play. And then whoever has just gone, it's back to them, and they have to lay on the previous card. So they're still laying on a five, even though this one is here. The Frozen Llama, let's see if we can find a Frozen Llama. Here's a Frozen Llama. The Frozen Llama works similarly. I can play it on any card, and it's invisible and acts just like the previous card. So if, if it is on top of the five, it would be like you're still laying on a five. So each one of these special character cards has its own rule. Santa Llama and Gingerbread Llama cannot be laid on each other, and after it's laid, the next player can only play special llamas, but not the gingerbread. Here, the next player can only play one to four, or a special llama, but not Santa Claus. So each one of these has their own rules. Baby llama is easy, you can lay it on anything. Elf llama is really great because you can play it on any card and it gets rid of the whole discard pile, the whole play pile which is really nice because if you can't play for some reason, let's say there was an eight here, and this is all I have in my hand. I would have to have five cards, but that works. There we go. If I can't lay, and I can't because these are all number cards lower than eight, I would have to pick up the whole discard pile. It's not usually this big, so don't worry. But it can, it can be quite a few cards. So the Elf Llama is a great card because it allows us to get rid of this pile. Okay? And so basically you just keep playing and every time you play, you draw up to five cards at the end of your turn so that you have five cards. And then once this pile is gone, once all of the cards have been discarded and some of them if this discard pile goes away, you just kind of set it aside. It's gone for the whole game. But once the draw pile is gone, and then I play out all these cards, I'm able to start playing 
these cards here that are face up. And I have to choose something that's able to be laid on the card before as usual. And so once I get those played, then I have to start playing my face down cards. The trick here, the problem here, is that I can't see the card. So I don't know if it's going to be okay. Like if this were the case, if I were trying to lay, lay this seven on the Santa Llama, I can't do it. The Santa only allows for special llamas. So I would have to pick up the stack. Play that out, and once I'm out of cards again, then I can start playing my face down cards. And this would be a lucky one to finish with because it doesn't matter what's underneath. So that is the standard game. Now let's talk about how to turn it into a math game. So it already is a math game if you have young children, little ones, because you can only play numbers that are large equal to or larger than the number that is there. So they're already comparing numbers. Four is larger than two, so I can lay it. Six is larger than four, so I can lay it, right? So automatically in gameplay, they are comparing numbers. But what you can do is you can institute a rule. You have to tell how to get to the next number. Six plus one is seven, right? So let's say I had a two down there and I wanted to lay this seven. I would have to say two plus five is seven. The other thing you can do is as you lay it, you have to lay, add the number to the one you're lay, laying it on. So seven plus two is nine. Eight plus seven is 15. So if you lay a number on a number, you have some math to do, some addition to do. You can make this game into multiplication by asking them to multiply the numbers. So if you're laying a seven on a two, you need to tell me two times seven is 14 in order to be able to lay that number. And if you wanna make the stakes higher, you can tell them if they get the math wrong, they have to pick up the pile. <laughs> so if they don't tell you 14 correctly, they have to pick up everything that's there. Or you could make it just those two cards the two cards on top that they're talking about the math for. You could do it that way as well. So it's not such a bummer. You can also practice multiples. If I want to lay a seven, I have to give you an arbitrary number, however you, many you want. The first five multiples of seven, or maybe the first seven multiples of seven. So they would have to tell you seven, 14, 21, 28, and so on for however many multiples you've asked for. Another thing you can do, you can make it fractions. So if I'm laying the seven on the two, my fraction is two sevenths, and I have to give an equivalent fraction for that, four fourteenths. So you can practice equivalent fractions with this game. So all of these are ways that you can turn Llama Drama Holiday Edition into a math game. And the nice thing is, that since you get to play these special llamas, sometimes you get a little math break. So you don't have math in every single turn, that way you're not completely ruining the holiday fun, <laughs> but it does incorporate math into the game quite a bit. The really great thing about this as a math game is that you can play with the different sets of rules for different age kids all at once because we're still following the basic mechanics of the game, the same rules where you can you have to play a larger number on a small, smaller number, special llama rules, following all the same rules. But you can ask your youngest child, they're just comparing numbers. Maybe an older child, a little bit older child is giving the sum when they play a card. A child that's even older is giving the product when they lay a card. So you're asking them to multiply. And then your oldest might be giving fractions and equivalent fractions. So you can be having them tell you different things as they lay their cards, but all playing in the same game. And that is pretty unique to be able to take one game, one style of gameplay, and incorporate everybody's math level into it. I haven't come up yet with a way to do algebra or anything like that with these cards. <laughs> I haven't figured out, you know, calculus with them. 
but we've at least gotten up through multiplication and equivalent fractions. So that's pretty good. If you do come up with a way, another way to use this as a math game, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you for joining me to talk about Llama Drama Holiday Edition and how we can turn it into a math game in all different ways. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas season.